Welcome, Meteor fans, to the Meteor Club Apprentice Series. Uh, this is what uh, session number three for working on the Meteor Club podcast website, uh, which, if you've been following along, we've co-opted the uh, the new Meteor podcast website, and we're changing it for our needs uh, to be the Meteor Club podcast. So we have somewhere where you can go and see the uh, the latest and greatest stuff about the meteor podcast uh a lot of people like i'm getting confusion on twitter like if i don't have itunes how do i listen to the podcast and we've got an rss feed but like there's no good way to publish that except for to put together a website in my opinion so true story yeah and so uh colby's joining me again welcome colby what's up all right, so let's dive into it. We've got a pull request, and then uh, maybe we can get into writing some code as well. So let me share my screen. Desktop one. Can you see my screen all right? I can. It's, uh, I'll zoom in once. All right, let me. For the viewers. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Oh, that's good, yeah. Okay. Nice and clear about it, and let me zoom in on the code too. Is that readable? That is readable. Right. Good guy over. There we go. Resize. All right, I think we're ready to go. Turned off my notifications so I can be a good pair. <laughs> Shut down Slack so I don't drive Colby nuts with my notifications. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so you actually paired with uh, Josh from Media Club as well, right? Yeah, we were playing around with my with my other personal projects, and I was like, hey, you do you want to check out this uh, podcast stuff? So we played around with it. Nice. Yeah, so um, the pull request, yeah. So you added a cron job to auto-insert the latest episodes from the Simplecast API. So we had kind of been talking about that and dancing around it, and you guys went ahead and worked on that. Mm -hmm. um, and so there were a couple of things that kind of matter here. Uh, one, we're going to start using a settings.json file, and that's where you're storing, securely storing the API key. Uh, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means when uh, we roll this to production, we can set an environment variable that has that API key as well. We don't have to worry about checking that API key into the code. So mm -hmm. uh, you put that in the git ignore, which is good. Um, you added the synced cron package, right. which uh, I think is a passable solution for what we're doing here. Um, let's see. Where's the synchron stuff? Let's go. It's in the server.js. And I and I did move all of the fixture stuff into the fixtures file. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so here we've got uh, some meteor methods that are fetching. Yeah, and you can see here we're using meteor.settings.simplecast key. Um, mm -hmm. which is only going to be available in the server environment. So right. It's an easy way for us to get access to that. And so we're just kind of concatenating together the API call and you're using the uh, Meteor HTTP package to make these calls. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it, and it has uh, async built in and stuff, so. Mm, yeah. Or wrap async, I should say. Yeah. Nice, okay. So that, that part is, um, like if we're extending it for another podcast site is a little, um, I guess, hard-coded as far as the dark, because you can get the dark and the light. Oh, but, okay, okay. Yeah, for now, that works. Yeah, yeah we, could, we could move this to the settings and probably like pull yeah. the light. Uh, that's for the embedded player. So it looks like you call fetch and insert episodes, and then you fire up Synchron. And uh, every right now, every one hour, you're calling fetch and insert episodes as well. And so that's just going to take the podcast ID if we have one in our settings. Otherwise, you're going to grab the first ID mm -hmm. from the API. And then you're going to call get episodes with the podcast ID. And that's going to return all the episodes for that podcast. 
Yeah, it's going to return an array of podcasts for that episode. Nice. Or for that, yeah. Okay. And so then you're just using underscore each, you're looping over it and then running a function here. And the function is just to upsert each episode. And so initially there was some discussion back and forth because you were doing inserts and um, uh, checking to see if this episode ID already existed. This is a key that's coming from Simplecast. And I said, why don't you do an upsert instead and it'll do the right thing. It will either one, do the insert or two, update the episode. And the side benefit of that is that we're making, there's, I guess there's two side benefits. We're only mm -hmm. making one call. And then also uh, if someone were to go in to the Simplecast site and change like the description or something, then every hour we're going to grab those and uh, do the, the upsert and update anything that may have changed. So right. I think that's a nice side benefit there. All right. So that all looks good. Um, so let's keep going here. Uh, uh, that was a note I added. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Yeah. We did talk about that. Uh, so we can look at that again today on the uh, hard coded iTunes link. Um, so it looks like you did some updating as well on the adding your own episodes. So I don't know, maybe, I, maybe once I accept this, we can show that, but basically you added a button to pull in the latest, is that code still here to pull in the latest? Um, I think we might have moved it out because okay. basically since we're doing it automatically, the, uh, the form, you can go in and add the ID and it'll still update it. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I'm kind of wondering, do we need all, all this jazz, right? Like, can we just ditch the form now that we're auto-populating? We, we can ditch the form if you want. Um, it's automatically done, so it's not really necessary. And, and plus, if you remove the form, you don't have to now go back and build in like a link to go to the form because right now we're manually typing in the link to go to the form. Right. And so you have like a sign in that someone else would see and they're like, what is this for? You know? <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could see maybe being interesting is uh, building out user profiles and specifying people on the show and maybe getting some nice like metadata around each user uh, and maybe even be able to click on the user and like seeing what episodes they've been on. So like if you clicked on my name, you'd see that I've been on all the episodes. Whereas you click on say, you know, if we have Paul Dowman on again, um, that will put him on two shows. You click on his name, you see those two episodes listed there, that kind of thing. So maybe mm -hmm. that becomes interesting, but uh, you know, yeah. probably Something not that, right now. Like one of those down the line features after launch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. And so you've, it looks like you've commented out yeah. a lot of the episodes. Yeah, I can explain that. So basically the way your fixtures work is they don't sort properly by date right? because, because of the way they're just manually typed. So in order to get five things showing up on the screen, I, uh, I just went ahead and commented three of them out since we have two to pull in just so it'll look right in our testing environment. So. Oh, okay. Okay. You'll, you'll see that when you start it up and it pulls in, you'll see that it, it puts the three fixtures at the top okay. inc incorrectly and then it correctly sorts the, the two actual data. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. And so this, this code was just code that you moved as well from the server JS. Yeah, to it makes more sense. It makes this, it makes the server file cleaner and then the fixtures does what it's supposed to. So. Okay. And then down here at the end, you just call synced cron dot start on mm -hmm. Server yeah. Startup. Okay. yeah, so I, I do one call when you first start the server, so it pulls in all the data initially, uh, that way you don't have to wait an hour. <laughs> and then and then after that, it'll run each hour. So. All right, so merge pull request. Nice job. Thanks. All right, so let's pull that code. Wah, wah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'd been playing around with the okay. insert as well, but we can get resets, servers, fixtures. 
No, get checkout servers fixtures. There we go. That settings.json should disappear from my status. Oh, why didn't it disappear? Because I spelled it wrong. Whoop, whoop. Two, three T's. All yeah. right. Set scenes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Success. And so over here. You got to do the. Yeah. Dash gotta, dash settings. Yeah. Yeah. But you need it running on another. Or did you close down your other stuff? Hmm? Oh, I thought you had another thing using 3000, but never mind. Yeah, I closed that one down. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was looking at this really awesome package uh, yesterday with, with a client, and um, it's called Transactions, and it mm -hmm. keeps track of the history of uh, a document in Mongo and lets you do, like, undos and redos and that kind of thing. Interesting. Yeah. It's kind of like its own little Git type of thing in a sense. Almost, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, uh, he he maybe wants to extend it into this new interface, uh, like a time machine like interface that shows you history. Huh. And so you could click on one and say "roll back here." That'd be yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, it'd be good for writing articles and stuff too. Maybe. Yeah. So here we can see synced cron fired up, and it said the next time it's going to run is at eleven twenty seven EDT, which is like right now <laughs> and so i'm actually gonna do actually let's kill this guy we'll do a meteor reset mm -hmm, that's good and then we'll run again let's take let's a look at it see what we get so you look at the bottom two and you'll see the actual stuff that was pulled in and so that's where i was talking now this is another thing that i, I mentioned to you briefly was that we should probably play with that title and remove the stuff after mm. the dash. Okay. Yeah. Do some string manip on that. Yeah. I wonder if we can grab out, we can probably do a regex here too and grab mm. this out and maybe yeah. store that separately as like a subtitle or something. Yeah. I mean that you can either regex that or you can just, you can just do the uh, uh, array index plus one. Whatever. Mm. Or maybe the other way around. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. If we get rid of these guys, I think we'll be all right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, all right. So we're looking good. We're pulling in data. Um, so the question now becomes what are our other high priority issues? Uh, we did the admin flag, didn't we? Seems the. Like the admin flag was the user roles thing I put in. Yeah. 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 Okay. Which I guess is less important now that we're not actually doing the form, <laughs> but still it's good for later. If we ever want to have like a admin section, we can put that on there. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Fix metadata, add pagination. We don't need the enhancements right now. Oh, look, we, we did this one actually. Uh, fixed by return. So uh, let's see. The pagination will be good after a couple more episodes. To yeah, yeah. I think we'll have some time to get it up there. Uh, uh, you'll want to do the iTunes thing. Probably have that not be hard coded. Yeah, well, let's get these uh, RSS feeds into the header and then okay. yeah, look at the iTunes stuff as well. Uh, so right now, actually, we probably want to view source. Hmm. Yeah, so we need to insert that stuff into the header. All right. Layouts, I think, is what we want. Yeah, this is the part I haven't really looked up as to how it'll work. Is 
don't know how you would subscribe RSS reader. Well, basically all we're doing is putting in uh, links into the head of the HTML document. Mm -hmm. uh, account settings. I just exposed my a API key anyway. <laughs> oh, it's all good. You can uh, yeah, we'll reset it. You upload it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just <laughs> funny. Yeah. Uh, like, all right, we'll be all careful about it. <laughs> no. Yeah, so this is the guy. So, yeah, we want, like, this needs to be put into the head tag. Oh, okay. There it goes. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so it's just a link that goes in the head, um, and it points to the RSS feed that Simplecast has. Okay. And so I'm pretty sure if we just do this, Meteor actually picks this up and like concatenates it all together. Okay. But yeah, we can find that out real fast. <laughs> yeah, let's see if I'm right on that front view page source. There it is, link. Great. Isn't that kind of awesome? I mean, I can, easy, easy. I, I can put that in any any template file that I want and it will pick that up and shove it in there. So to me, logically, like I think it makes sense to put it into uh, the layout file. Um, yeah, I think I had done something similar. I have like a header file or whatever with just head data. Um, yeah, I've got a head.html in my client folder, and it's got all that stuff in there. Now, I thought there was a way, like, uh, maybe that's not Chrome. Is that Safari, maybe? Yeah, it's not even in a template, the one that I'm using. It's literally just says a head.html. Yeah. And it just knows. Yeah, yeah. It just, if it's in any HTML file, it'll pick that right. up. Right. Yeah, that's cool. Isn't there a way, I thought when there was an RSS feed on the page, like it gave you... Like a, like with your browser, you mean? Yeah, I thought it gave you like a feed reader browser thing. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. Not to Google it, RSS feeds. So, I mean, I guess you'd have to use like an RSS reader of sorts to pick that up. So, I wonder what would be like a. I think it's in there, so I think we're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the, the actual data is there that we need for it to work. Yeah. Do we have a link somewhere? Uh, iTunes, Twitter, Media Club, SoundCloud, Stitcher. Uh, we could probably repurpose SoundCloud here or Stitcher or something to be like RSS. Yeah, that would be good. Just have the little RSS icon in there. I'm okay. guessing that's using Font Awesome. Seems highly likely. Uh, yeah. Yep. FA is Font Awesome. Yep. Let's see. Here we go. I got you the FA dash RSS. Yep. I got it. You can see okay. it on the screen. Here. Oh, cool. <laughs> One step ahead. Looks good. Effort. All right. So let, let's put that link in too. Um, so clients views. Because I don't, I don't have this stuff on SoundCloud, and I don't, I'm not real sure if it's worth putting there yet. Okay. I haven't like figured out if that's a worthy. SoundCloud oh, has a cool embedded player. I like their little graphics that they show on there, but that's. <clears throat> Not really net relevant here. Yeah. You know, you know what would be really interesting is if we take the MP3 file and hook in the SoundCloud API and like make it auto upload an episode to SoundCloud for us. <laughs> mm -hmm. We could probably do that, honestly, if it's uh, as long as they have a API. Yeah. Um, uh, 
I mean, I'm sure they have something. SoundCloud developers. So I'm gonna take SoundCloud, we'll put it right here. Uploading audio files. Uh, yeah, looks like you could upload audio files. You just send a post request to slash tracks with one of their SDKs using the post method. Ruby, Python, PHP, or JavaScript, cool. JavaScript, that's exactly what we need. But this is fun. The JavaScript SDK does not by itself have access to the file system, so instead it records some audio in the browser and then uploads it. Interesting. What? That, uh, that's, that's the comment on their JavaScript SDK. <laughs> that's kind of weird. Oh, I guess because maybe they're assuming it's going to come from. Do they just have like REST URLs that we can use? Um, yeah, it says you send a post request to slash tracks endpoint. Okay. Yeah. All right. But they have like an SDK that you can use. Anyway, anyways, that's for me looking at it for like a minute. So. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So each new episode gets numbered with number one, and the previous one becomes number two. So the newest one is one on iTunes. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, but that's a that's a common convention. So anyone who uses iTunes would, I guess, technically be used to that, right? So. Yeah. So how do I? If I take this guy out, will it get there without the? No, it's still. So you're trying to get a link straight to the correct episode being highlighted uh right now i'm just trying to get the link straight to itunes without an episode being highlighted actually oh okay so you just need to like search for oh, let me see if... that guy there we go that's a link that works perfect yeah i'm just changing this itunes link to be just a gen generic yeah okay and uh, when you're looking at the API, did you notice if uh, you get like an iTunes link for each episode by chance? I'm guessing not because I think iTunes consumes the RSS feed and then they do their thing. Um, I'd have to look at the object that was returned, but I don't, I don't know if that's stored on Simplecast, is it? That would be easy to find out. We can just do a console log. Yeah. Let's do that real quick. Uh, in, uh, it's in server. You can just do a meteor.call in your browser. Oh, yeah. Good point. Um, get episodes is what I would need. Get, right? get episodes, and that returns the data. So you would just, that would give you an array of all the episodes. And you can check it from there. That would work, though. Because from the client, we don't get the return. Oh, you know what we can do, though? Meteor shell time. <laughs> Oops. Did I call it wrong? Get episodes. What did I miss? Oh, we need the podcast ID. 11 and wait. Mm -hmm. Boom, there we go. So what do we get? We get a global unique identifier. Doesn't look like a doesn't look like we get anything iTunes related. Okay. So the next question becomes does iTunes have an API? <laughs> I'm sure they have something. Let's see. There you go. Control C to quit the REPL. Oh, I'm still used to like Ruby land with the REPL. Mm -hmm. I hear you, man. 
All right. Uh, you know what? We should make a package that makes exit work in the REPL. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for people that are used to Ruby. Yeah, I don't know. Just seems cleaner. Uh, search API. I'm guessing that's what we'd like. Look up search. All right, so let's get. I'm going to put in some of these other links while you're looking at that API. Mm-hmm. So we want Meteor Club. Meteor.js.club is the website. Get that up. Twitter. RSS feed works. Twitter's working. Media Club's working. iTunes works. Good stuff. So, how does Stitcher work, actually? Yeah, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> oh, actually, I've heard of it, so I'm guessing it's just another popular. It's, I think it's a pod catcher. Um, they don't look like they have a search though. Get the Stitcher app. Yeah, isn't it just like a phone app for getting podcasts? Maybe. I just used the built-in podcast app that comes with. Oh, that that thing is terrible, man. Yeah. It works. <laughs> but I hear you. I use uh I use no, I'm gonna say it wrong. Overcast. Overcast. Yes, uh, it's tremendous. If so, it's free if you want, but then they've got a paid version that uh, gives you like um, it'll do. Let me get all the features right. I'm pretty sure there's like a, basically anytime there's a gap, like a silence gap, it'll kind of speed through it. It'll speed up the. Oh, okay. Thing. That's interesting. I yes. just run them like I just run them like permanently at one point five or two. Um, nitpicky details. Here you go. Sync over cellular. Seek acceleration. Remote episode skip. What's that do? Oh, oh nice. nice. So like, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it allows yeah. you to turn on. Um, so you can use the headphones to do like the 30 second skip. Hmm. You know, okay. like the little headphone control right here. Yeah. I've got the, what, what is it? Like you just hit a button and it'll. Yeah. It'll fast forward 30 seconds and that's settable as well. Seek back or forwards by X. You'd set it to seven, 15, 30, 45 and 60 seconds. Interesting. Let's see notifications. I thought there was more in here. Hmm. Okay. I thought I had the pro version. I swear there's a way to like link directly to your Stitcher episode Twitter it didn't work STI CA 
H-E-R, Stitcher. That's the one. Hi, this is Andrea Borcha. And I'm Charles. Oh, sorry about that. Oh, my goodness. I thought that was something I did. I was like, what did I click? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Stitcher. Yeah, see, they've got this, but they have no way to find this page. That is crazy. Hmm. Uh, Does the uh, iTunes podcast just have like a podcast episode ID or something like that? I have no idea. Um, we've got a, uh, yeah, we've got this ID here. Okay. I assume that's what we need. Yeah, uh, it looks like the API is just like a simple search API. You just have like a, like a lookup and then like the ID of the episode essentially and then it gives you an object with the data for that episode. So you can just pull out the, you know, the track view URL. So. Okay. I'm just looking for, uh, they've got an example for a movie. I'm just got to find the actual. So if I just go here, Will it do the right thing? It does, it does. Stitcher's leading mobile audio platform, encouraging users to discover the best of news, entertainment, and sports, auto distribution, increased audience, deep listening metrics. Hmm. Ah. I think we'll have to maybe, I think I have to submit. Oh, it's not like an auto discovery? Yeah. Uh. Uh, I think Meteor Podcast might be in here. <laughs> this is nuts. Keep hitting listen, it's not doing anything. It's weird. <laughs> That's awkward. How did I do that? You have to plug in that's messing with your links. Use as guest. Well, it's like a it's like a JavaScript link. Yeah. There you go. There it is. I've got uh I've got Vimium at, for a Chrome plugin. I have to turn off sometimes on websites. What's that do for you? Makes me able to browse websites with Vim commands. Oh. So I can like, I can hit, uh, I can hit a button and it brings up like buttons on my keyboard that I can press to open a link and then I can hit like shift J or shift K to go forward or backwards and, uh, or just like J and K to scroll up and down, or, you know, so it's kind of cool. Nice. It's real nerdy and stuff. <laughs> There it is. Good stuff. Yeah, so that's the Meteor podcast, but I, well, don't, I don't think... Uh, oh, yeah, but you have you have Podbean do that automatically, right? I think it may. I don't know. Or someone submitted it. Okay. Uh, mm. uh, yeah. Meteor Club. Yeah. Mm. 
It's totally not in there. All right. <laughs> well, that's something maybe figure yeah, out. We'll, just, we'll, we'll like hide it. it. Yeah, we'll hide it for now. Yeah, we can slowly just get a wrap on how these things are done automatically for us. Yeah. I'm going to hide this guy for now, too. How's that look? It's probably going to look weird. So this guy's going to disappear. It's a little unbalanced. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll move Meteor Club up, up to the left. Yeah. Actually, RSS feed probably makes more sense there now. This is more like that will make the left how you consume the show, and the right's like just other stuff you may want. Mm -hmm. Change this. This is probably like super boring stuff. Is there programmatic stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, I was like, uh, I'm going to have to do some editing on this one. We're just kind of looking up how uh, other APIs work. But <laughs> I don't know. I think it's interesting. Stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's how you build stuff. And yeah. You figure out things. Yeah, I just don't, I don't think like changing this or changing this stuff is like very interesting to people. Mm -hmm. The uh, so let's see what is so what would be the main things we need to get done to have this launchable? Uh, let's look at our list again. So we've got this one into the head. Let's commit that actually. Sure. Do get add dash p. So we got the head there. We don't want to put those in yet. Uh, get commits. RSS feed into the header, into the head of the HTML file. Fixes number three, right? Yeah, number three. So push that up. That guy's done. Uh, so number five, but I think honestly, we could probably deploy this and then I could go back and fix number five off camera. Um, mm -hmm because that'll be, like I said, boring. So we could do number four and number nine. That could be interesting. Okay. So four is the share it link where people can just click it to share on their Facebook and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Oh, I did email. Let me finish this. So I did email, um, what you would call it, the uh, Simplecast guys, and they said that the only thing they could think of to get the episode to auto or to play when you click a button outside of the iframe would be to uh, basically emulate a click inside the iframe. So we would catch, uh, which I'm not sure we can do. We would catch this mm -hmm. click and then like basically tell it tell the browser to click this guy. Interesting. Is it possible to actually, instead of doing an iframe, like pull in what would be an iframe and post that on there? Because then we can just do it normally. If we weren't using an iframe. But I don't know. No, that's the only way I know how to do it with the inbound. Okay. Yeah, OK. Uh, the other option is we could just replicate this to be a download link. Like, that's not super helpful, but. Yeah. Let's see, or take it out completely because it's confusing if it doesn't have the functionality that we'd expect it to. Yeah, but I wonder like how obvious is this up here that they should be clicking it and to like listen to this episode down here, you know? Usability concerns, definitely. Um, they are. Scaling to nine issue. When, when I click right there, it opens, at least for me, on the Mac, it opens like a mm -hmm. web browser with a QuickTime player or whatever. It yeah, I think most, I think Windows does the same. And, uh, let's see, if I'm looking at other people's podcast websites, see if they have similar. Uh, that seems to be like a, a common thing that I see on other podcast websites is you click on the episode, it's got a download link, and then it's got the little player at the top. So they don't have an extra play button anywhere. They just have a download, you know? Okay. So let me see. I'll, I'm just, I'll just look through other. You know what? Uh, then maybe we change that button to be called download instead. Uh, 
I was gonna look at smart passive income. Mm hmm. Good. That's a good one. Yeah. No, he's got a pretty big site here. Yeah, so he's got the little player embedded down below. What's this full size page look like? Oh, that's funny. He's using the same exact player as Entrepreneur on Fire, where you click on it and it that, that yeah, that's like a component that's shared between some people, I guess. They must be using something to do that. I wonder if yeah, it's like a know. WordPress plugin or something. Um curious. That's that could be possible. I know they are smart, a fan of that. Smart track player. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Pat Flynn made it. Uh, that would make sense. Smart passive income. So I'm guessing you pay for this. You do. Interesting. It's just a player embedded, though. Hmm. Okay. Well. Hundred bucks a year. It's not terrible if you if you like it. But it's got all the share stuff built in, I guess. It's got the share it link in there. Yeah. Download link. Uh, yeah. Speed control. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm. I feel like we're already getting all this, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the simple cast, we have it kind of built in. Yeah. The only thing I don't. Well, let me see if it's there. Oh yeah, it does have it. Yeah, so it's just got all that stuff you need, other than the share links, which we can put in the uh, meta. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, did you grab the show notes too, by the way? Uh, that should be on the long description, I think. Nice. Okay. Awesome. If that's if that's where you put the show notes anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the idea. And I'll make I'll make Ben do something more with that. <laughs> All right. Uh yeah, so that's gonna be hard coded till we get that done. Yeah, okay. So I'm I'm just thinking like mm -hmm. I wonder how the HTML5 audio player works. HTML5 audio tag. Yeah, that's the one where you would just literally call audio.play. So are you thinking of uh, linking to that as a player inside of your browser instead of the... Well, know? yeah, this, I'm wondering if this play button would be better if we did something like that. Let's play with that. I just, sure. I want to learn something new, so... Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. it's maybe it's total crap. Maybe we get way off in the weeds, but <laughs> well, we'll find out soon enough. Yeah. So client views. Uh, let's see. Featured episode. So that's the transcript. Where is the play button? This guy, here we go. And I will send you over the link for the share this button. And decide what style you want to use. Oh no, we're gonna use a package. Oh, there's a package? Yes. Alrighty. It's wonderful. Share this package. Share it is the name of the package. Oh, does it use the share this uh, button up? No. Oh, no. okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought, I, when you're saying share, I thought you were talking about the actual uh, share this, the yeah. website that you see on everyone's website. Nah. Okay. Oh, I got you. Oh, I see. Meteor Club slash share it. I got you. Of course, you got to use your own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a chance to test it out, too. True story. Mm -hmm. We All can right. pull in the local version. All right, so we just define. <clears throat> yeah, you just do an audio tag with a source file. So I think what we want to do is break this here. Let 
let's just put this in right here and see what it looks like. Controls. Audio, audio. Source. Now we gotta tell it a type to type equals audio MPEG, I guess. Hmm. Then we just give it the download link, right? Should be good to go. Hey, look. Sounds, that's pretty simple. It's just a little, uh, you put it inside the button. I did for now. <laughs> All right. I wonder if it's messing up the button. Yeah, let's try moving it out. Uh, I think my audio source is wrong or something. Did you link it to the download link or? Yeah, the download link's not filling in. Do we have something going on there? Sources download. Is the context not right? Oh, yeah, we're looking at the wrong episode. Yeah, you got to give it the, the real episode, right? Okay, I did that. Well, we've got a source now, but it's still not playing. Why not? <laughs> Maybe we've got the mime type wrong. Mm, possible. Let's see. Type equals audio slash MP3, right? Uh, that is not what I put. I put MPEG. Let's try. Yeah, you need to do MP3 because I think that's what it's stored as. Let's try that. Yeah, MPEG is a video. Click that guy. No, still no love. The heck? Um, well, I don't know. Maybe it is MPEG. Let's see. No, I mean, this this site, this random site on the internet says you can do audio slash. No, it is MPEG, yeah, MPEG. for MP3. Yeah. Okay. So. I did have it right. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So why are you no worky? 1505 audio tag. Uh, if you paste in that link that you are using, does it take you to the audio player? Does it take me to the audio file, you mean? Mm hmm. Well, it's the same link right here. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, what the heck, then? Uh, I wonder if it has an issue with the source being an external link instead of a... Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Let's put this guy in here and see if we get that. I was looking at the styling options for it. Uh, let's get it working before we style it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I was looking for the it works and then I found it. No, the URL of the audio file, possible values, an absolute URL, which points to another website, or a relative URL, which points to a file within a website. Should work. Totally should work. Why not? Why you no work? Mm, okay. I, you know, the thing that's killing me is I would think we would get like some kind of error mm. somewhere, you know what I mean? Well, it's just HTML, so usually HTML just works or it doesn't. It's not doing any JavaScript stuff. 
There's our audio controls. Well, take a look at that. It seems awkward that it doesn't want to. It seems so simple. It's like, well. Yeah, we're gonna be missing something. This website says you need to say controls equals controls. Are you? Or what are you using right now? Are you just using the basic example? Yeah, just the audio. Controls equals controls. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the basic example on W3 schools works fine with uh, just having the source in there. Uh, let's see. Let me go with that. Try it again. God, it's loud. <laughs> that little, yeah, it's like freaking loud as heck. All right. You can put the source up in the audio tag itself too. What, did you did you originally have the controls as nothing? Itself, yeah. It just said controls. Okay. Hmm. Let's see what happens. Hey, that did what? it. Just putting the source up at the. Yeah. That's weird. I wonder, maybe. I don't know why. I can't decipher why that works, but. Yeah, that's a little weird. All right. So if I do that, though, can it just be a self closing tag, or do I need to have like. Oh no, they still put this, your browser does not support audio tags in here. <laughs> Get a better browser, noob. <laughs> All right. Well, that's simple enough, or at least. <laughs> I guess it was a little complicated in a weird way, but. Is it weird to have two players there, you think? Yeah. You do? Yeah, I think so. Hmm, okay. Seems like a little, uh, like which one do I click on? <laughs> well, either work, right? So you can sure, be solved by clicking. <laughs> yeah, it's just, <laughs> yeah, this is awkward, yeah. But it's simple, so gives you a reference point there. Get some space around this guy. It'd be a good way to, I mean, if you wanted to go back to what you were going to do earlier, instead of using the embed code, you could just do an HTML5 player that you have custom styled or whatever, and uh, and then you can use a play button, which would which would run the JavaScript play command. Valid that point. One. Valid point. So where are we putting in the embed player? And the uh, the I thing. Let's see. Seems like it should be part of this podcast play. Mm, under epi underscore episode, maybe. Let me see. And I would have, I would have thought it would have been under no, featured not. episode. I think it's just in home. Featured yeah. episode. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah, home is just so large, it's hard to find anything. So. All right. Uh, let's move this guy over here. Oops. Let's see what that looks like. Let's 
not terrible. Hmm. Yeah, you just have to do the... That's where we would figure out the styling options for it. And then add the little speed up controls. And uh, yeah, we can make that work. Let me look at the command to. That's interesting. What's up? Yeah, okay. I don't know, it like auto kicked off the play for some reason when I switched When it. you switch the player? Yeah. Do you have auto play set to true? I didn't, no. That was the mm. weird part. All right, well, so let's let's bring back the play episode button. We'll get rid of this. I'm gonna be horrible. We'll just say style equals for now. If you do decide to do it this way, you can actually get rid of the uh, API call for the embed code, which has to fire off for each episode individually. Yeah, yeah, we may do that. Because this thing might be a little more stylable for us. Yeah, and, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's you can play with it with JavaScript, and you can do custom styling. So. Why is the width only hitting 100%? Because uh, we've got a wrapper around this guy. Mm, yeah, because we used that to uh, style the uh, embedded one. So if we ditch the this guy. Where is the course? It's down here. Okay. Let's try ditching that guy. You can actually select it with just a simple jQuery selector, and then do uh, you can do you know you can do like vid equals you know my video or whatever for that element, and uh, just do vid dot play, and that's all you have to do. Mm. So the rows constraining my width. So. Oh, all right. Sorry, I was looking at design stuff. So you're saying I can do like uh, audio? Okay, so give it an ID or whatever. Give that yeah. uh, element an ID and then you'll just do audio. Yeah, that should work. Oh wait, I probably gotta, probably gotta say like zero or something. There we go. Uh -huh. Okay, but we got a yeah, that first one like auto plays. That's really weird. Mm. I have to look at that. <laughs> Stop. What? Uh, <laughs> what's the <laughs> What's the command for stop? stop. Uh, wait, I didn't have it. Uh, it's pause. Pause. Okay, so play. Pause. There we go. Nice. Okay. So now, now we can build something with this, right? Yeah, exactly. Worst case scenario, if, if we can't figure out why it's playing automatically, we just have a button that says pause after you click it. That's true. That's true. All right. Well, I'm going to, like, we've been at it for an hour here, I think, on that yeah. episode. So I'm going to end <laughs> it go. here. Mm -hmm. um, but what we'll probably do is I'll uh, finish up this audio stuff. I'm going to try to get the width, like, some styling done. Yeah. yeah, full on there. Uh, just curious, you were saying controls, like there are different controls we can use? Or no? Okay, well, yeah, I'm sure there's something where you can put in like the little uh, speed thing, right? So let me look. Uh, it's got to be like all kinds of control options. Audio. the audio controls. Here we go. Oh. Oh. It just says play, pause, seeking volume. I wonder how people do that. Let me see. Yeah, I think that those are the only ones we get, play, pause, seeking, and volume. Yeah. 
how to change the speed limit. That's fine, though. I mean, it's not horrible. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure we can figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to it. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, it wasn't too boring. You learned something. Um, definitely the code review. We're gonna try to from now on if we do pull requests and do code reviews at the start. Um, we'll be making notes in the um, pull request, and then that way, like you can kind of see the history of us talking back and forth as well. That might be interesting. So. But uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I think I think maybe next time, like I'm gonna edit some of this metadata tonight, maybe, and we can uh, off screen, and then uh, we might be able to at the start of the next one. Maybe I don't know. I got a crazy week. Maybe Monday we can record one and uh, like push this up to Heroku or something, and kind of do a little bit of a deploying overview type of thing. Yeah, that can work. Yep. All right. Well, again, thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. See you, Colby. <laughs> this video has been a Meteor Club production. You can find out more information about Meteor Club and join the mailing list by clicking on the Meteor Club button below. If you enjoyed this video, you can also hit the subscribe button below and get more content like this. Thanks for watching.